Hello, 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 beautiful people. Welcome back to another old school RuneScape video. Today, I'm going to help you complete the brand new quest called Beneath Cursed Sands. So, this is a master level quest, but honestly, it is not that hard. I just completed it on my Iron Man, and all I would really recommend you is to have about 85 melee stats, and you should be just fine as long as you follow the guide, really. Uh, but other requirements in order to start the quest are going to be obviously 62 agility, 55 fire making, and 55 crafting but also a completion of contact quest and um, well with contact you also have to complete Prince Ali Rescue, Itchlerin's Little Helper and Gertrude's Cat. If you have all of that done you'll be able to start the quest. Now the items that you're actually gonna need throughout the quest are just a tinderbox, coal, iron bar, spade and raw beef. Alright, so all those five items are all you're gonna need, and obviously I will be using a desert amulet to teleport myself to Narda, you can use a Polnivnich tab to teleport yourself to Polnivnich, you can use Faro Scepter to teleport yourself around desert, you have multiple uh, different options, I will personally be using a desert amulet for... But that is not a requirement whatsoever. I mean, the other thing that is worth mentioning here is that I will be rocking in basically max melee. Um, but you totally do not need that. I just completed a quest on my Iron Man and all I needed was a whip and uh, some carol pieces and a glory. So it was really easy to complete the boss fights uh, as long as you follow the mechanics. Alright, I think this is pretty much everything we gotta do here at the start of this intro really let's just jump into the quest we're located right in Sofanem, just a little bit east of the pyramids and all we have to do here is speak to jamilia to start off the quest so we're gonna be holding spacebar throughout this one and the first thing we're gonna say is what is this special um, item and after that option number one to start off the quest and from here it's pretty much just um, yeah, free sailing. The next thing we're gonna do is read this message, and from here we're gonna head east of Sofonam and talk to Misa. She's gonna be located next to Campfire, right over here, just straight up east. I think the best way to go about it is to run a little bit south and use this door uh, as a way of, you know, leaving Sofonam. So we're just gonna follow this route, and we are going to go to this little area right here next to the rocks. Also, every time I'm uh, changing the play, I always like to check just to make sure that I'm on the right step. And obviously, if I at any point miss any steps, I will make sure to edit it out. But here's the campfire. Here's the Misa. Uh, let's go ahead and speak to her. Hold spacebar as always. And we will be selecting option number one as soon as that is available. We now no longer have the little note in our inventory. And we're going to say, let's go. From here, we're basically going to be heading south to Necropolis. Um, there's going to be some manified guards, and all these people are basically cursed, if I understand the, ro the lore correctly. So she already takes us here, and all we gotta do from here is just uh, run a little bit south. This is going to be your very first fight. This one is super easy. You just need to make sure you're not praying. If you pray, you're going to be hit hard, so do not pray, and you'll be perfectly fine. Also, your stamina potions whenever you see necessary. I don't know if 2 is going to be enough, we're just gonna guess that it is. Um, after you make it to this big blank circle, you just inspect the blocked entry, and you hold spacebar once again. Um, we're also gonna speak to Citizen, because apparently that is not something I did. And there we go. As soon as I speak to Citizen, a cutscene happens, and it should be our very first fight. Obviously, this is a day one guide. I just completed the first part of the quest, so if any steps aren't like completely um, perfectly thought out, I would like to ap apologize, but obviously I'm doing this as fast as I possibly can to help as many people out as fast as possible. I will be using the Warhammer spec just to lower its defenses, but as always, you can just use regular attacks and they're gonna be perfectly fine. Just make sure you're not praying because you're gonna be getting hit a lot if you do. After this, we are going to be returning to Misa, and she's going to be located next to Campfire again. Um, but let's just go ahead and finish the fight first. There we go, the fight was super easy. A level 174 head manified guard is now defeated. And uh, we now go through the conversation with Misa, and we just hold spacebar here. Okay, we bonked him hard enough for him to be, you know, seeing things again, so that's pretty good. And from here, let's just go ahead and run back north. We're going back towards the campfire, and uh, 
yeah, basically just, just a little bit north and uh, east. Also in the future, Mysa is going to be located, I think, next to this little rubble. But you don't need to worry about that, this is just going to come in a little bit later. So for now, we are just following the path and we're going to be jumping over the rubble here in a second. This little rubble over here to the north, we're going to jump over that. And then just head north, follow the path. I'm not really going to bother eating any food right now, I don't think. I think 50 HP should be just fine. And I'm once again going to just drink stamina potion whenever my stamina is low, basically. Here we are at the campfire, we're now going to speak to Misa. And once again, just going to be clicking these uh, every now and then, just to make sure I'm in the right step. I don't know, I don't want to be making any mistakes here on the guide, but obviously, you know, mistakes can happen. We've all seen Soup's guides at some point in our lives, right? So, it is what it is. Alright, so more spacebar here. From here, we're pretty much going to go... Uh, further east, so Maiza is now no longer here, and now we're gonna be discovering this whole Ruins of Ulek situation right now. Uh, this is where also the first little, um, how shall we call it, a, a puzzle is gonna take place, okay? There's multiple puzzles, they're fairly annoying, I'll try my best to explain how to do them, uh, but, uh, you know, ultimately it is just, yeah, you'll just have to think just a little bit, you know, you're gonna have to actually use a little bit of brain. First of all, I'm gonna just try to see if this works before I discover anything, because later on we're gonna have to dig right on this spot, but it doesn't work yet. So, make your way around here and climb up the stairs. So, all the way around the big rocks, all the way north, and you climb up the stairs. From here, run further north, and we are gonna be inspecting the furnace. Hold spacebar and click yes. Hold spacebar and click yes again. You're gonna light it. Hold spacebar and that is now a furnace available. Now we're gonna search this well. We're gonna find a stone tablet, read it. Now go further north. Make sure you read the stone tablet. Uh, further north, inspect the pillar. Hold spacebar while you do it. Let's just do it again just in case. And then um, inspect the entry to the dungeon as well. Perfect. After you click beneath the cursed sands, you now should have a few options here telling you exactly what to do. Firstly, let's go to the southernmost pillar and let's go ahead and dig there. That's gonna give us a little chest. The answer to the chest is really awkward, a very long number. Um, it's gonna be 1118513. Don't worry about it, I will let you know when it's needed again. And just if you are a, a speedrunner a little bit ahead of me, you know, you have that option right now. So you see, this is a southernmost ritual pillar. We step right here and we click dig. Now we have the chest in our inventory. We click open and we type 1118513. When I first did this, I was going 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. And then I gave up. All right, uh, let's move on. I mean, we now have Scarab Molt. We can now uh, go ahead and run further north. Also, worth mentioning, water skins are probably better use of your money than drinking brews. Apologies there, but like, uh, yeah, maybe you should bring a water skin. If not, just DM me in game. I hook you up with 10k for an extra brew. My bad, homie. Right, use a Scarab Molt here on the furnace. And we're going to be making a Scarab Emblem. Now we have a Scarab Emblem. We're going to run north. And we're going to be using that on this pillar. After this is click yes. And now we're going to have to rotate the Scarab to be facing south, like this, and then click Confirm. After that, you're now able to enter the dungeon. If you have enough brews, this is perfect. If not, you will need it for this fight. I am going to try to pray against this. Last time I didn't on my Iron Man. Let's see if I can hit a crazy number. No, it appears that I can pray. Perfect. We're just going to smack these two guys around. One spec on that guy, one spec on this guy. We're going to kill the little swarms as well. Also, if you do not have Serpentine Helm, um, I guess an Anti-Poison could also be helpful. You can do it without it. It's just going to hit like twos or threes. So do not worry too much about it. So as soon as you're killing these two, you're going to be able to go through. Nice little rhyme there. Uh, the next room is going to be super simple. It is literally going to be kind of like a Sepulchre. Um, if you do not want to sepulchre it, it's like an agility minigame that you can kind of do. Right, let's turn our prayer off, let's open the door, and um, it's locked. There should be a... 
Oh, wait, hold up. Yep, we need to climb down the stairs here. My bad. And here it's gonna be the sepulchre minigame thingy. Do not worry if you get hit. It literally deals no damage. Just run south and then run north. You can dodge these little arrows by going either north or south of them. See, I just got hit a 5 there. It is what it is, right? And you can use these little alcoves to sit, like to be safe or whatever. Or you can just be an idiot like me and just run right through. And get hit permanently. But you know, it is what it is. So, I'm just gonna run to this one. So if you really don't want to get hit, right, you can just stay here, boom, use this one, boom, whatever. I don't care about getting hit fives, so I'm just running through. Here we're going to pull the lever and now the timer is going to start ticking. From here you want to be fast. So we pull the lever on south, now we're going to have to pull the lever on north. It's that simple. We step here, boom, we step here, boom, wait for another set of arrows, perfect. We go here and we just go. I don't care if I get hit here, right? So I'm just running further north. Even if I get hit a little bit. And we're just running all the way north. Gonna step to this one here, maybe I'm fast enough, maybe not. Looks like I'm not. And now we're gonna pull this lever. What that's gonna do is that is gonna now stop the ticking sound and we unlock the next room. I am going to drink a couple of brews because I think I'm gonna hate this place right now. This is gonna be a little bit of a puzzle, alright? If you're a dumb person like me, you hate puzzles, but do not worry, I'll make it as simple as possible for you to follow this, alright? So you are now in a room that looks just super scary. Here's what we're gonna do, okay? We're gonna, hear me out on this one, open a notepad. Perfect, alright. Now you have notepad available, yeah? I have it down here, okay? I have notepad ready on the, like a half of my part of my bottom screen. And here's what you're gonna write down. Right now, everyone follow me, okay? Man equals health equals wine, okay? Then Scabaras equals isolation. Hold on, I can't type apparently. Isolation equals carving, okay? Then you're gonna type crocodile equals um, resource. Okay, here, I'll pull it on the screen so you can follow me along. Resource, huh, it's fullness equals necklace, all right? And then baboon equals you. No, I'm just kidding. A baboon equals companionship equals linen. All right? You might be like, homie, what are you on about, right? But look, all you have to do is click this plague right here. And this is going to be different for everyone, okay? There's, there's going to be like, bro, this text, I don't want to do it. I was stuck here for an hour, do not worry, okay? Here, let's read it together. In the days that followed the great sacrifice, Osmuten was faced with the task of ruling without the guidance of his lord. He called out to the four avatars in the hopes of gaining their support. Since this is going to be different for everyone, this is, these are the important parts that I took out of the text in order to get to a logical conclusion. You can also kind of brute force this by just knowing a few solutions. For example, in my case, the importance was to figure out who was the third arrival. If you just do a little bit of logic thinking, the third arrival was actually Crocodile, and he has to be north of the baboon and south of another. What does that mean? It needs to be somewhere in the middle, all right? So either option number two or option number Number three. Now, my um, another important information was the fact that Baboon was south of Scabarus. And I just brute forced this, and the way I did it was I just put Baboon on the bottom and Scabarus right on top. That only leaves Crocodile being able to be one above that, and obviously Man on the very top. That was like the only possible solution. Let's say if I wanted to do it a bit differently, and I wanted to put Baboon on the sec like under Scarabus, and then Scarabus under Crocodile, Crocodile could never be in the correct location. Okay, so this is basically the only way I could solve mine. This is going to take you a little bit of time, but try to find the two, um, two truths, okay? Two truths, and then you can brute force the others if you're unsure. That's how I got around it. Um, I hope it can help you that way. Also, this part was skipped from the recording. Search the southwestern little pillar thingy, and you are gonna get the four stones, and then you use the correct stone in the correct urn. Okay? One will be north and four will be south. You got this. I believe in you. 
I'm also going to include a Wikipedia link in the description if that can help you out a little bit. But as soon as you're done with that, you can now obviously pull the lever, open the door, proceed through and speak to the ghost. I actually accidentally deleted the recording here, but you speak through the ghost, you hold spacebar through the entire conversation, and then you search this urn right here to the left and you're going to be getting a key. All right, after you get a key, you pretty much reach the point where I accidentally deleted my recording uh, because I was rage quitting at the boss that I failed, okay? So I just clicked delete and then I was like, shit. Uh, but anyways, you are free to go to the bank right now. If this took you a little bit of time, grab bruise, grab combat pods, grab restores. If you want, grab range as well. Range is better at this boss. I'll personally just do it with melee. But if you have range, you can go ahead and range it as well. I'm going to teach you all the mechanics about this boss. It is fairly easy, but also fairly hard if you're slow with your reactions. So just keep that in mind and run all the way back. Make sure you have the key in the inventory that I do not have right now because I missed my recording. You're going to up, climb up these stairs and you are going to be right in front of the room that requires you to have the key. You're going to open this door and then the boss fight will happen. Alright, quite a bit of hustle to re-record all of that and get back into a position for a boss fight. We're gonna pray mage, we're gonna pray piety, we're gonna drink the super combat potion and we're gonna open the door. Alright, you're gonna have to go through the conversation for the first time, I'm doing it for the second time and we're gonna pray mage and after every hit we're gonna move back two spaces. And I'm gonna explain to you why we're doing that and the reason for it, he does this big attack, I'm too slow for the first one. Um, but you you can dodge that attack by just moving back in time. He also has multiple other attacks, which is one scarabers like these swarms. You want to make sure you hit those only five HP and then move away. Always keep brewing, keep moving two tiles away. Be patient with your hits. See now I see his hit. I run away. Make sure your auto retaliate is off. It's gonna make it a whole lot easier. And just keep brewing, keep restoring when you're healthy. Keep potting up. That is another hit, the Shadow Rift, you make sure you hit it, 20 HP on that. And as you can see, I'm always moving, always anticipating his next big black attack. Okay, so I'm waiting. Three, big black attack, we move back like this. Doesn't hit me, and then I can hit him like three, four times quite safely. I don't need to worry about it too much. And then when he does this special attack, I once again start moving, I kill the Scarab. I move to safety, I hit, and I'm always ready to see a black attack, I move. Just be ready to keep your distance. It's quite hard, but you got this. And then I have like three or four free hits until the next special attack happens, which is going to be like now. And I'm still moving and I'm still anticipating the big black hit. Constantly moving, constantly keeping distance. It's going to happen now, you see. I'm super far away and now I go back into it. Few free hits. And uh, it should be just as easy. Obviously, if you take damage, brew up. And uh, I'm always going to brew up when I'm like not full health. So I'm moving here. After this, I'm expecting the, the hit. So I'm moving, I'm moving. I'm going to the corner, dodging the hit, restoring, and back to combat pot and back for the big hits. Okay, if you use range, you'll always keep your distance. If you use melee, you got to utilize a few free hits. And then once again, I'm going to move back here and anticipate the big black attack. See, big black attack, we run to the corner and we return and we should be able to just kill it here. That's his special attack. We're just going to go ahead and kill this, even though I don't think I need to. But I don't know what happens if you don't. So once again, I'm anticipating the black attack. Didn't happen. Boom. He is killed. Boss done, super simple, super easy, lots of food left to spare. Um, definitely watch this fight before you go into it, uh, or if you failed, so you can kind of see how I play. But uh, the best suggestion I can give you is move back to spaces and... Uh, yeah, just keep hitting, move back, hit, move back. After he does the big black attack, he won't do it for about 5 hits. Okay, so then you're free to deal your damage. Um, obviously, if you don't have Dragon Warhammer or whatever, you might be hitting a lot more zeros. Or if you don't have Bandos on my Iron Man, for example, it took me quite a little bit of inventory of food. Um, but there it is, you know, super simple. And we have now done it. From now, we actually uh, can check the Beneath the Curse Sands quest and we should be returning to Maya that is now going to be located in Narda. So here is where I'm going to use my Desert Amulet. If you have any other ways of transportation to Narda, feel free to use them. I'm also going to recharge my stats. Uh, you can, for example, teleport to Polnivnich, use the car like the uh, carpet system or use your Pharaoh Scepter. Here's going to be another minigame. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and speak to Maya.
uh, that is basically located at the herbal store, the herbal uh, thingy. And this is the part where you're gonna need the raw meat. And we're just holding spacebar here, making it super simple. And the Maya now departs. Alright, from here we're gonna be running west. And once again we check this, make sure that we need to take Lily off the Elid next. And uh, this is going to be located right in this little island, just south of Polnivnich, just left of Narda. And for this part you're gonna need a raw beef. And all you're gonna have to do here is super simple, you're just gonna give this beef to a crocodile. That is named Crocodile. Wait. He had name earlier, I could swear. Let's use this on him. Ah, it's Roger. See? It's Roger. Give the meat to Roger. Dude, why was he just named Crocodile just then? And then uh, cross over the stepping stones. As you step over, you're gonna go ahead and pick up this lily. And you're gonna be returning to the herb shop in Narda with this lily. Let's go ahead and speedrun it a little bit by teleporting with our desert amulet. And this is where another little minigame is gonna happen that I'm gonna try my best to explain, but it's literally a little bit weird. So, speak to Marie, Ma uh, Maisa here, give her the lily, and then use this chemistry table. Okay, so here is this, and you might be a little bit confused, like, what the hell is this, right? Let's try to click a couple of things and see what happens. So here's the thing. As soon as you can fill one up like that for free, do it. And then look at this, I can also fill this up, and I can fill both of these almost to the brim by just clicking both of this up. From here, all I gotta do is do a little bit of this, wait... Can I do it like... I don't really sure. Basically, last time I just kind of clicked stuff and it just kind of happened. So we're just gonna... Let's see. So wait, if this goes to full, how could I... If I up this, this goes down. If I down this, this goes up. So... Oh wait, I can lower this. Wait, 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 wait. So can I just do this? And then lower that, and then do this, and then lower that, and do this. Yeah, that's the one. So you get both of the middle and the right one to the top, and then you just click uh, one low, one low, one low, one low, and middle, right, middle, right. Okay, super simple like that. Try to follow what I did. I kind of sped run it there. But up, 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 all the way till both of them are up, and then bottom left, bottom right, and you will be done. Beautiful. Now you should be receiving the cure curate. Awesome. Um, with that, we're now going to go, ha we're, we're basically going to have to go back to Sophonum. How are we going to do that? I could teleport with the scepter, or I can use the... The, uh, the, 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 the rug system. My god, I said the, the a bunch of times there. Uh, I'm gonna use the rug system because I assume most people do not actually have the scepter. I assume there's a lot of Iron Man or whatever doing this. But if you have the scepter, um, yeah, you, the next step is going to just be to speak to the head priest uh, when you have the crate in your inventory. Um, after we are in Polnivnich, we're gonna travel with the rug merchant. And we're gonna go to Sofanem. Make sure you have the cured crate in your inventory. Um, and after we're gonna speak to the head priest, the next step is going to be to free the people in the necropolis. Uh, we're very close to the end of the quest here. Um, but yeah, let's just go ahead and... Uh, wait, should I have returned to... hold up. No, 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 I think this is fine, this is fine. Yeah, yeah no, we good, we good, we good. I uh, panicked a little bit, but we're doing everything fine here. Yeah, we just need to go to the head priest with the crate right now. All right, all right, all right. And let's speak to the High Priest right here, a little bit south of Sofanum. It seems like I forgot to write down a couple of steps here, so we're gonna kind of improvise. But I'm pretty sure from here we need to go ahead and cure the people. So let's just double check here. We need to find Maisa at the Necropolis. Let's go ahead and do that. So Necropolis is going to be this dead land right here. We're gonna go ahead and run east and go through the door here. We're gonna stamina pot up so we can run through it easier. 
and we are basically one boss fight away from completing the quest here. So as we leave this place, we go further um, east, uh, climb over the rubble, and this is where the Maisa is going to be located. Um, make sure your inventory is good enough for the fight. This one is a lot easier than the other one. So I'll show you some nifty trick you can do in order to take basically no damage. So let's speak to Maisa here. Hold your spacebar again. And uh, yeah, it's just about holding spacebar, going through the cutscenes here. And pretty much waiting for the last fight. We have now freed all this citizen. And we are gonna attempt to open the rubble to this place right now. Um, but there's some citizens that are actually gonna help us out. This blocked entry, here they come. Citizens are here to save the day. Okay, and we're basically teleported uh, a little bit north towards the camp. And this is where the fight is gonna happen. There's gonna be a little bit of drama between the Maisa and Osman right here. Um, if you're into lore, feel free to like uh, go through this part a little bit slower if you're interested in what's going on. I personally have already read through it. And uh, Osman is just gonna kind of dip here and we're gonna go through a little fight again. There it is. There's a bunch of little fire. And we'll be fighting a very strong lady with a dragon scimitar. So the idea is to make this fight extremely simple. Pray melee, pray piety, pot up, and after every hit, run behind her. Hit behind her. Hit behind her. Every single time. You can kill the shadows or ignore the shadows. But as long as you just hit and go behind her, you're going to be completely fine. And the reason why I do this is this big attack that she just did. Okay, this is a lightning attack. How do you dodge it? Boom, hit behind her and you hit and you go behind her and we're already halfway done. I'm ignoring the shadows. If they're dealing too much damage to you, feel free to kill them. You do the same thing. I'm going to pull her a little bit away here because she was at the door. And just like that, hit and behind her. And once again, hit and behind her. And this is going to be the last thing about this quest. This is going to be the last fight. I'm going to brew up a little bit. Do not want to risk dying. And just one more hit. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, you have completed your quest. However, first we have to speak to Osman. And we got to hold some spacebar. And uh, then we just have to return to the head priest. And the quest is done. I'm going to take this moment to ask you guys for a quick like on the video. Maybe leave me a comment if I helped you out with this one. Uh, as we are returning to Osman here, this took me obviously quite a little bit of time to get out. I completed the quest right on the release on the Iron Man, wrote down every single step of the way that I could help you guys with and then did it again on the main. Had a little bit of struggles with the puzzle, um, but I hope I was able to help some of you guys complete the quest or hopefully all of you guys complete the quest. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure having you here. If you're interested on more of the non-guide videos I make, I have a lot of Deadman Mode stuff, Leagues stuff. Um, I have a second channel where I post literally anything, mostly New World at the moment, but more or less anything. Um, but yeah, if you're interested into any of those stuff, check it out. Maybe give me a, vi a video a like. It does help me out a ton. And uh, yeah, after speaking to High Priest, this is going to be it. I... Uh, Thank you all for your time and uh, enjoy this quest completion. This is going to be a prerequisite for the Raids 3, I believe. So there is a little uh, Mana Force Sofanem situation. And uh, yeah, just like that, we're going to be done with the quest. You're going to get a little bit of agility XP for it. You're going to get a nice little weapon and a nice little headpiece, which I honestly don't even know what it does, but uh, you can probably read into it if you'd like to know. There it is, Beneath Curse Sense completed, um, a little bit of quest points, agility, carries Pertwician and uh, Circlet of Water. There it is. I think you can put water chargers into this and uh, it'll keep you hydrated in the desert. Um, yeah, thank you for your time. I'll see you again very soon with another video and until then, have a wonderful day. Bye bye everyone. See ya.